How's everyone? Everything's okay? Just checking my my uh, setup here. So everything is uh, at home right now. So we will be quarantined now. <laughs> Please let me know if my audio is uh, not clear or you have a blurred vision of my presentation later. So please let me know. I can see you on the comment. Hi everyone. Hi Kai. Hi Ash. Okay. I should start now. So first is... Uh, I want to say that I uh, uh, hope everyone is safe at home because here in Philippines everyone's locked down so unfortunately we cannot go out and uh, majority of us are like uh, doing nothing <laughs> so in line with that that's why we're doing this master class our objective for this master class is that uh, to give everyone uh, something to do not only like uh, uh, having uh, watch your Netflix or should they say doing nothing? So why not learn something from us uh, doing this master class? And uh, hopefully uh, you get something, and then uh, you learn. And for and for the others, maybe a refresher course to you guys. No, so I think we should start. So for today, we're going to talk about rum. No, we're going to talk about rum for today. You know, so. Uh, basically, what is rum? Okay, what is rum? For me, uh, rum has this, should I say, a wide range of styles and flavors. There are rums that we call like aged rums, an aged rum. Uh, you also have this uh, spice and flavored, light and dark, and there are rums also overproof. So, I think. This type of spirits is so notable and versatile in terms of uh, in terms of spirits. Uh, so on that note, I'm going to uh, take you to a journey to this class on uh, a rum production process. Okay, so basically, we're going to talk about rum. Okay, so first, what is rum? Okay, so what is a rum? Okay, it's a spirit that is made from sugarcane okay so sugarcane thanks to sugarcane we have this uh, rum uh, but but majority of rum production uses molasses okay so what is a molasses okay, molasses yeah so how do we get a molasses so first we're going to harvest the sugarcane okay so after we harvest the sugar cane, we're going to press it, uh, we're going to take the juice, and then we're going to refine it, okay? The first refinement is the byproduct of sugar cane that we use for coffee, our white and brown sugar. So after, after we get our sugar, the leftover during the production is what we call a molasses, or sometimes they call it a blackstrap. Okay, so thick in terms of its consistency, dark, thick, and sticky. So majority of rum production uses molasses. Instead of throwing it away, why not? Let's make it a, a rum, okay? So aside from molasses, uh, some rums also uses a sugarcane juice. So what we call the rum agricole, uh, namely cachaça, a Brazilian rum. So instead of molasses, they use uh, sugarcane juice. So those two byproducts of sugarcane is the major ingredient in making our rum. Okay, so that's rum. That's sugarcane. Next is rum must be made in a country that grows sugarcane. Okay, so country that grows sugarcane. Uh, for me, on that note. Uh, to be able to understand rum, you need to like uh, 
look for its country of origin. Uh, where is it made? What style is it been? What style? Uh, how they produce? So probably uh, looking to its country of origin for me is to better understand rum. Okay. So, but we're talking about rum. What I can say is that in uh, there's always an exception to the rule, though. Uh, a lot of ROMs are made in this particular country, but sometimes they they, they uh, tweak their style on making it. Okay. Next is ROM must be bottled of minimum of 37% alcohol by volume. Okay. So meaning to be able to call ROM or spirit, you must be bottled of higher than 37% ABV. So majority of our rums are like 40 and we also have overproof rum like uh, like 75.5% alcohol by volume uh, one, 151 proof okay so to be able to call rum it must be a bottle of 37% ABV. So so that is rum okay so please let me know if you have uh, questions. Uh, I have this. I can. I can. Uh, I can entertain your questions. So please let me know uh, if I'm going too fast on this session or uh, anything. Okay, just let me know. Okay, I'm. Uh, I'm keen to answer all those questions. Okay. So next is. Next is how is it made? Okay, how. Is it made? Okay. All rums has these three main ingredients. First is sugar. Next is yeast, and lastly water. This three ingredient is the main, uh, should I say, uh, main ingredient in making rum. You must have sugar, yeast, and water. Okay. So after you have that three main ingredient, the first production process that you're going to do is the fermentation stage wherein we're turning uh, we're turning sugar into alcohol by using yeast so basically yeast it's sugar and it produces carbon dioxide and alcohol okay uh, I always say this that Fermentation stage is the birth stage of alcohol. So majority of our rum uh, during this fermentation stage, uh, you can get at least a minimum of uh, five to eight percent alcohol, and a maximum of should I say eighteen percent to twenty percent alcohol by volume during this fermentation stage. Okay. So after fermentation, okay, after we have this, uh, after we have this. Uh, this process to be able to call a spirit you must undergo uh, a distillation process okay uh, distillation process so we uh, we have two main stills okay in uh, distillation process so we have the copper pot stills and the column stills again to be able to understand understand rum uh, the country of origin Okay? Because each country has different ways of using stills. Some are using only column stills, just like a, a Spanish rum, uh, like for example from Cuba, from uh, uh, from Cuban rums uh, are uses uh, they uses a uh, uh, column steel, and uh, French style also uses column steel. English style rum uses copper pot steel, so it depends on the country, or should I say, uh, rum producer, what steels they're going to use. So, what happens during distillation process? Okay, what happens? So, basically, distillation for me to make it, like, should I say, uh, uh, a simple point. Distillation for me is like a boiling water into a into a kettle. Okay, we need to introduce heat. Okay, we need to separate water, we need to separate the alcohol from the water by means of boiling. Okay, like a, like a still is like a, a kettle. Okay, so as the vapor rises, and alcohol rises, and then uh, it passes through a tube, what we call condenser, 
and turn into liquid again and you have a higher alcohol okay you have a higher ABV the more you distill a spirit the higher the alcohol you get so like for example if you're going to use uh, a copper pot steel this uh, this type of steel the one the, the brown one okay a copper pot steel uh, you can get up to a maximum of 69% alcohol while using uh, a column steel this type of steel uh, you can get up to a maximum of 96% alcohol by volume of continuous steel again the more the more you the more you uh, distill the higher alcohol you get okay but the downside is some of the flavors are missing okay so the, we have a higher alcohol but the flavor sometimes uh, disappear as well so after we distill majority of our rum are being aged okay or being matured into oak cask okay uh, this is the this is the process we're in uh, what can I say is that uh, this is the process we're in rum takes a longer period of time okay it stays a lot no so what happens during our aging process okay so first is first is a flavor being imparted by the wood to our spirit that's the main reason why we use this uh, oak barrels uh, actually for our rum we use this a uh, bourbon cast okay? ex bourbon cast or should I say uh, American oak because it gives out flavors and imparted to the to our spirit second is flavor become more mature okay the more the more our spirits being uh, should I say stay in a barrel the water evaporate evaporates and then uh, the flavor uh, the, the liquid inside the barrel is being concentrated and it becomes more flavorful okay and next is oxidation okay so oxygen oxygen takes takes place inside the bottle it develops the the flavor the aroma of our rum and the charcoal that inside the bottles uh, it acts as a filter okay it uh, it removes some impurities on our spirits so it makes more delicious rum inside the barrels okay and lastly Evaporation concentrates the flavor. So we have this, uh, we have this saying in Filipino, uh, we're in, uh, uh, we say it, habang tumatagal, lalong sumasarap. No? So we have this uh, saying. It means that uh, the more the spirit stays on the barrel, it becomes more flavorful, it becomes more delicious. Okay? So after... So I'll pause for a while to see if someone asks some questions. So uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, so far there's no question. My God, I love this. <laughs> okay. Okay, next, after we age our rum, majority of rum production doing a blending. Okay, when you say blending, you're going to uh, mix different types of barrels. Some they call it solera. Some uh, some are like like for us we call it blending. We blend our rums, okay, two or more barrels. So why do we blend? Why do we need to combine uh, different barrels? So as far as I know, I I haven't seen any what we call cast strength rum, no. Uh, majority of rum are being blend no two or more barrels because uh, like for example if I go in to make my room here a warehouse or should I say uh, aging room should I say it can fit about a hundred a hundred barrels inside my room okay? all those hundred barrels has unique in taste there is no such barrels has uh, distinct or should I say same flavor Okay? To be able to produce a single profile or a single flavor from, we need to mix 
two or more barrels just to produce okay one style of rum okay so that's why we blend rum okay two or more barrels sometimes it, it, it reaches up to 40 different barrels just to produce a uh, uh, one rum okay hello everyone sorry I'm too busy <laughs> but if you're keen to uh, ask questions, please let me know. What's up? What's up, mga madlang people? <laughs> okay, so after blending, after blending, okay, to a specific profile, uh, before we go into put it on the on the, on the bottle, we reduce by we cut the alcohol by adding water. Okay, to reach its, uh, should I say, desired alcohol by volume by adding water to cut down ABV and then put in the bottle and then head to your bar. Okay, so that's the basically the production of rum. So first is fermentation, then distillation, aging, bottling, and then cut of water and then should I say quality control and then bottling. Okay, question so far? guys so let me introduce some uh, some famous feature in terms of rum so do you know Christopher Colombo uh, Christopher Colombo bring uh, this guy actually is an explorer in search of spice okay he, he always has this uh, should I say voyage where in looking for different places just to find spice and then uh, he eventually made it to Caribbean country and then introduced sugarcane there and then eventually that's the start of uh, should I say should I say that uh, sugarcane plantation and then they make it rum okay and of course one of the favorites especially for bartenders famous figure in uh, in rum uh, the Don the Beach Comber uh, he started the should I say the Tiki Revolution uh, in a in Los Angeles way back in 1930s, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, oh 1933, okay, so he started the Tiki Revolution, so that's why uh, uh, in terms of cocktail, I have this, uh, I have this, uh, should I say, uh, category, when you say Cuban cocktails, that's the daiquiri, that's the mojito, that's the old Cuban, uh, and then we have this island, island cocktails were in uh, we have these piña coladas, mai tai, and the jungle bird. So that category of cocktail, I think, uh, best way, uh, should I say, uh, best uh, for me to categorize in terms of rum. So we have this Cuban, Cuban style, and we have this island style. So for me, uh, Don the Beach Comber is one of those, should I say, started the island style, where in the Tiki Tiki Revolution started. Okay. And uh, a little bit fun facts about rum. The earliest rum were made way back 1640 in excess of molasses. So imagine uh, they all they already producing rum way back 1600 uh, in excess of molasses. So at first, when I was uh, when I was uh, reading this this uh, this fact that 1640, why do we have excess molasses that time? So imagine people like how can we produce molasses how they can how they have this should i say uh, an excess molasses so probably they're producing a lot of sugar and then i think sugar they use the sugar just to uh, stimulate their body to make them active so that's why they produce a lot of sugar and then it turned out to be they have excess molasses so i think that's the main main thing why they have uh, excess molasses that time they they eat a lot of sugar just to just to have uh, uh, like an uh, uh, like a, should I say an addictive form of uh, uh, supplement that time uh, the sugar and eventually 1640 there's no no much of a modern technology that time no modern technique that's why they produces uh, they produces a very harsh very crude spirit uh, also what we call aguagente no, Arguagente means fire water that's so harsh, so crude that uh, you don't even drink it just to have a party. Uh, they use it as an as antibiotic, as a medicine. Now, if you have a cut, 
that time and then uh, you put arguagente and then uh, it will heal <laughs> so you won't you won't use arguagente to have a party unlike now so so i think that's the possible way uh the, the way they use uh, arguagente uh, as a medicine and rum probably get its name uh to the word uh, the word rambolian which is a uh, promotion so so rambolian this one okay rambolian it means commotion no so eventually after drinking a lot of agua gente no there's a uh, uh always a commotion no always a commotion that's why they think that rambolian uh is a uh, should they say uh where the rum started okay okay i think that's it uh, do you have any question Okay. Do you understand my master class? Okay. So if you have question, please let me know, uh, and probably I can share to you some ideas. So do we have? Thank you. I closed my bar already. For me, meantime, business will be bad here in China, even after the pandemic. Okay. What's up, my brother Carlo? Keep on shaking, my brother. Again, guys. Uh, uh, next week, I'm also I'm also doing this again, uh, the basic rum, and then on the thirtieth of March and uh, I think April first, I'm doing some uh, rum cocktails. I'm going to share some rum cocktails with you. Okay. So next week, uh, I'm going to do this basic rum again, and then please let me know if you have other topic that I want to you want me to discuss. So. We have this question right now. Dark versus white rum, please. Okay, that's a great question. No? What's the difference between light and dark rum? Okay, so first, what is a light or white or silver rum? So usually, rum, every rum is a, a actually, majority of rum are all age. No, though they have this, what we call light light rum but majority of rum are being aged on a shorter period of time and then for the white rum or for the light rum uh, it underga it undergoes to a, a what we call a charcoal filtration it filters and it removes the color of the of the rum and it turns into white okay so light rum so it's usually uh, very light crisp and dry in terms of its taste while hence to Hence to dark rum, dark rum uh, sometimes uh, it requires uh, uh, a different barrel, wherein inside the barrel they roast it, they roast it, uh, should I say, uh, they, they roast the, uh, inside the barrel to have this darker color, uh, uh, and some are, uh, are used as a black strap molasses as well, okay, At, uh, I think that's the, the difference of the two. Uh, so light rum aged on a shorter period of time and then undergo into a charcoal filtration hence to the dark and black rum uh, they use the different types of barrel to add more complexity and flavor and uh, color uh, to the rum okay but nice question that's from Ali1311 if I'm not mistaken what's your favorite rum drink from my brother Joyce what's my favorite rum drink Okay, uh, so since I'm stuck here at my house, so my favorite rum drink is rum and coke. <laughs> What's, what, what drinks go best with, uh, with Bukhari? So, another great question again. So, well, in Bukhari, we have also a different styles of rum. Like, for example, we have uh, Bacardi Superior or the Carta Oro. It best, uh, it best uh, if you're going to make a mojito or a daiquiri. And then we have this uh, Bacardi Gold uh, or the Carta Blanc, Carta, Carta Oro, where it's, it, it's best to make a, a Cuba Libre. Okay? And, this, and then we have the Bacardi Black. Uh, Bacardi Black is my... Uh, uh, what should I say? Uh, a black and coke thing, and then uh, 
we have the Grand Reserve range, the Bacardi 8. For me, Bacardi is uh, one of my favorite rum uh, among all the range uh, because for so flavorful, so complex, uh, uh, it even tastes like a whiskey for me. Uh, for me, uh, Bacardi 8, uh, I want to make it as a uh, old fashioned, rum old fashioned. Uh, for Bacardi 8 and uh, if you're keen also in making um, a tropical cocktail using Bacardi 8 uh, try uh, banana colada instead of piña colada use banana uh, for uh, for uh, Bacardi 8 uh, banana uh, coconut cream uh, and then Bacardi 8 uh, banana colada for me it's a, it's a good choice for Bacardi 8 and uh, I think that's it uh, thanks for asking Mr. Highballer my, my brother Daniel. <laughs> Some more question, guys? Before our before uh, we end our session. So we have this question from uh, Jaws uh, Korea ten seventeen. Uh, Sir Nin, ano po meaning ng bat sa Bacardi? So, what is the meaning of bat uh, for uh, Bacardi? So, so let me let me uh, tell you a story. So, uh, way back 1862, uh, our our company Bacardi is being established, and uh, Doña Amalia, actually the the wife of Don Facundo, our founder, uh, noticed that every time every time the worker uh, go to the old distillery in Cuba. There's a uh, there's a uh, food bats that always uh, go out on the rafter of the of the distillery. For Spanish, but our bats are good omen to them. Okay, it means uh, uh, it means uh, family unity, uh, good health, and uh, fortune or prosperity. That's the meaning of bat. So, Doña Amalia. Uh, he he contribute that why not use the bat as a as a logo or as a for our for our rum. At the same time, way back 1800, Cuban people are should I say illiterate people that time. Uh, they know they don't know how to write or even uh, read. So if they want to enjoy drinking rum that time, they always look for the for the bottle with the bat logo in it. They know that they're going to drink. Uh, they're not they're going to drink a good rum. So before uh, the Bacardi Bacardi rum are not called Bacardi rum. They call it the rum with the bat. Okay. Until people from Cuba already know how to read, and then this they read the uh, Bacardi. So the meaning of bat for us is uh, good health, good fortune, and family unity. That's the meaning of bat. And uh, Doña Amalia contributed. Uh, on that part uh, of our logo, right? Hope I answered your question. Yes, brother Mike, banana colada. Try that one. It's nice. Kuya Onin, pag nag-request ako sa yon ng bahala ka na anong rum drink. We have this uh, question right here, wherein uh, he, if he, if he asked me a bespoke rum drink. Uh, what is a bahala ka na? So it means uh, whatever you want. So, so for you, EJ, I'm going to give you a uh, uh, rum shot. <laughs> Just a shot of rum. Uh, probably on the rocks of old fashioned, uh, old fashioned uh, using Bacardi 8. I think that's the best for you. Okay, you like drinking. Does silver rum differ to a white rum? Okay. That's a good question, okay? Silver rum differ to a white rum. Well, light, white, silver rum, whatever they call it, they're all the same, okay? It's just that uh, different country, they have different definition of it. Uh, uh, but, as long as, but as long as it is uh, clear, I think you can call it silver, light, and white. But majority, again, majority of rum are being aged. Though it is white, or should it be silver? Uh, it's being aged and then undergoing a charcoal filtration just to remove, just to remove the the color. That's why here in the Philippines we call it Bacardi Superior 
because uh, it's being aged. Okay, I hope I answer your question. Thanks, brother Rolly. To be you. What is special about Bacardi Ocho? Okay, what is special Bacardi Ocho? Good question. So Bacardi Eight, Bacardi Eight, uh, it's been aged in a Caribbean sun for eight to nine years. It's a mixture of different blends of uh, different uh, types of rum from eight years up to sixteen years of age. Imagine, uh, imagine uh, you putting uh, a barrel of rum into the to Caribbean heat. So that's why it loses a lot of, of, of angel share, of evaporation. So that's why it becomes more flavorful. And uh, Bacardi 8, 8 years is the, is the youngest. Okay? It's the youngest on the blend. Okay? Bacardi 8. So that's why it gives out more complex stuff. It stays. It has layers of flavor like maple, honey, uh, uh, even spices. Uh, 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 what what else? Uh, actually, I'm out of words of explaining a Bacardi 8. For me, it's, a, it's the best rum for me. Uh, so Bacardi 8 is more complex. So, again, Bacardi 8, the youngest, 8-year-old uh, up to 16-year-old. It's a blend of different types of rum. Uh, so, try it. It's good. Yeah, Jairo, you're right. El Ron de Michelago, the rum with the bat. Can I ask different mini Bacardi from mini Bacardi bottles from you? <laughs> I will double check on that <laughs> if I have uh, mini bottles of Bacardi is on stock. <laughs> Thank you for reminder. <laughs> Try banana colada. Yeah, try the banana colada. It's amazing. <laughs> and uh, and and you know what? You know what? Uh, in light of the in light of the uh, of the what happening pandemic right now, uh, what I have read that uh, banana also help to cure. Uh, uh, actually, it's not a, uh, it's not. A, I don't want to give any any confirmed statement, but. I read something that banana helps cure uh, coronavirus, but no. <laughs> but try banana colada. It's good. <laughs> and also, I love banana. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. okay, guys. I need to. I need to like end this session uh, again. If you have any 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 question please let me know uh, because I'm going to have another session of just like this uh, next week okay next week another session like this so please please uh, stay tuned thank you for tuning for my brothers here thank you very much I hope you learned a lot hope you get something okay 